welcome to the course business analytics and data mining modeling using r so uh, last time uh, we started our discussion on performance matrix uh, so before we uh, proceed further uh, we'll do uh, some exercise exercises uh, that are related to what we discussed in the previous lecture so let's open r studio so as usual uh, let's uh, load this particular library xlsx so that we are able to import the data uh, set from excel file so again uh, uh, for this uh, particular exercise we are going to use a don card xls uh, data set data set uh, the particular concept uh, that we want to uh, discuss through this exercise is class separation uh, where we, when we started our discussion on class performance uh, sometimes uh, depending on the data set uh, sometimes uh, for some data sets it might be easier uh, to apply different uh, techniques and uh, get the uh, accurate classifications for different observations. Sometimes it might be very difficult because of the uh, data set. Uh, so uh, let us uh, uh, see this through an example. So we will import this particular data set, set on car. Let us run this code. So this is the uh, data set. So you can see in the data set has been imported 20 observations, 3 uh, particular variables. Let us remove the NA columns and uh, we have as we, all, as we are already familiar with this particular data set. So we are going to uh, plot these two values annual income and household area uh, as we have done before as well. Let us plot this. Now this particular uh, plot we have created in previous lectures as well. Uh, now important point to note here is despite being a small data set or uh, maybe that is the uh, that is uh, many times the reason also that the classes there are two classes in this data set owner and non owner classes and there is far clear separation between these two classes. So therefore it is easier for us to apply different methods applied uh, you know build a different candidate models and then evaluate. Uh, the most useful one or to find out the best performing model right so in this particular data set the job is much easier but sometimes uh, the situation scenario might be difficult might be different for example the another da data set that we have used before as well the promo offers uh, data set this particular file so let us import this one Let us remove the NA columns, let the data, yeah, yes the data has been uh, loaded, 5000 observation of 3 variables. So earlier data set was 20 observations, 3 variables, this one is 5000 observations, so much larger data set. Uh, now in this uh, let us remove the NA columns and uh, we are going to plot this particular data set. This plotting we have done in our, our previous lectures. So palette uh, like the last time we had used, we had uh, used this gray and black palette that we created. Uh, Let us change the margin and outer margin settings and plot this particular, these two variables income and spending. Now if we zoom into this particular data set and uh, if we look at other things. Uh, the uh, points belonging to different uh, classes, you would see that uh, this particular region, this uh, left, uh, you know, uh, this uh, left uh, part of this rectangular region, plotting region, uh, there is uh, homogeneity, there is uh, most of the points uh, belong to uh, one class. But if we look at the right part, uh, there is not much clarity. Uh, we have points belonging to uh, class 0 and we have point belonging to class 1. So, uh, both uh, classes are present. So, the separation between classes is not uh, very much clear. Therefore, uh, when we apply different candidate models on this particular data set, uh, the performance will have to be, will have to be evaluated much closely and we, uh, we might not get uh, much improvement in comparison to the benchmark cases. So, uh, for a classification task, point me for a classification task, the class separation is quite important. In the previous lecture, we also talked about uh, the uh, classification matrix uh, 
so uh, uh, one simple example that I had uh, written here uh, is uh, this creation of this uh, classification matrix. So this is how if you uh, for a uh, demonstration purpose if you want to create a matrix classification matrix this is how it can be done. Otherwise, if you have uh, if uh, you have information in two variables and they are uh, factor variables, then table is the command that could be used to generate the classification matrix. Uh, so, in the previous uh, session, we talked about uh, error and accuracy to two matrix. So, this is how we can compute them. So, in this particular case, you can see uh, zero classified as 1 and uh, 1 classified as 0. So, these two numbers would actually give the uh, number of uh, misclassification and uh, this will uh, this particular code will compute the uh, error. Similarly, accuracy uh, uh, records uh, zero of class 0 classified as class 0 and records of class 1 classified as class 1 and uh, this will give us the accuracy number. So, uh, let us go back uh, to our uh, discussion on the performance matrix. So, uh, in the previous uh, lecture we stopped at this point and uh, 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 so let us start uh, from here. So, when uh, there is a special class of interest uh, then performance matrix uh, accuracy and error might not be suitable. So, in that case because uh, we, uh, we have one special class of interest and we might not be interested in uh, other class classification, the misclassification error and whether it uh, is on the slightly higher side or lower side, our focus is on one class. So, in those scenarios we can use uh, these two matrix sensitivity and specificity. So, in this case uh, sensitivity is about identifying uh, two uh, positive fraction. So, the uh, cases the cases belonging to class 1 uh, how uh, how much a particular model is capable enough to identify such cases. Uh, similarly, specificity uh, measures uh, the capability of model in terms of uh, identifying or removing the uh, observation belonging to class 0 as class 0. So, that is true negative uh, fra fraction. So, different candidate models can be compared using these two matrix. So, if you look at the name its uh, names of uh, these matrix sensitivity. So, whether our model is sensitive enough to identify the true positives right that is a class 1 observation. So, uh, how much of the what proportion of the class 1 uh, uh, class 1 observations are being identified by the models that would be captured in sensitivity. You can look at the uh, formula as well. This is the num uh, number n11 divided by n10 plus n11. So, that means number, uh, uh, number of observation, number of class 1 observation identified as class 1 observation divided by total number of class 1 observation. Similarly, specificity if we look at it is a true negative fraction wherein the formula is n00 divided by n00 plus n01 that means the uh, number of uh, class 0 observations identified as uh, class 0 observation, uh, observation uh, out of uh, total class 0 observation. So, uh, whether the how, how much how much uh, capability of the model can be tested can be evaluated using a specificity, uh, specificity is, uh, in terms of identifying the true negatives whether we are able to eliminate the uh, true negatives uh, through our model or not. Now, uh, let, uh, that brings us to our next uh, discussion on ROC curve that is a receiver operating characteristic. So, this particular curve is generally used to plot sensitivity and 1 minus specificity uh, points as the cutoff uh, value increases. So, for different cutoff values we try to uh, compute uh, these uh, two uh, matrix sensitivity and then 1 minus specificity and then we try to uh, plot them for different cutoff values. So, uh, now, uh, the uh, this particular curve is in a way uh, the way uh, this particular curve was earlier used for radio signals uh, in World War II 
wherein uh, the radio signals uh, and uh, the signals that were received whether a particular signal is identifying a enemy ship or tank that uh, so uh, that was identified through a blip in the screen so uh, that is where this name is coming from receiver operating characteristic but uh, this particular curve can be used is being used in uh, multiple domains uh, especially in uh, anal to solve analytics uh, analytics problem and especially where uh, statistical modeling or data mi mining modeling is being done so uh, top left corner of uh, this particular plot as we will see through an exercise uh, reflects the required performance the desired performance that we want from our model so uh, let's uh, open our excel file that we used in the last session so uh, here as you can see in the previous lecture we created this uh, one variable table where we computed accuracy number and overall error for different uh, cutoff values uh, uh, similarly we can compute sensitivity and specificity uh, for different cutoff values so you can see the values here and you can see how these are being computed so you can see that it is the uh, owner classified as uh, owner that number uh, number of owners classified as owner divided by uh, number of uh, owner classified uh, as owner plus a number of owner classified as non owner so that is the uh, fraction uh, uh, that is how the sensitivity is being calculated similarly if we look at the uh, specificity this is actually uh, the number of uh, uh, non owners being uh, classified as non owner divided by the total number of non owners so that is how we are computing this now one variable table can actually be uh, can actually be can actually be computed uh, using uh, these two formulas so we can see that uh, i have already created uh, this uh, one variable table and for different cutoff values you can uh, check these numbers so as we were talking about the roc curve so this particular data set can we this particular data that we have just generated can we use to create our roc curve so we have uh, taken out this particular data and uh, uh, copied here in a different uh, uh, different worksheet right uh, now this uh, data set will import into r and will create our uh, roc curve uh, in the meanwhile uh, the previous uh, table that we had created in the uh, in the in the previous uh, lecture this accuracy and overall error so one particular plot has been created uh, here uh, be between accuracy for different cutoff uh, values if we look at the uh, cutoff values they are plotted in the uh, in the uh, in the x axis and uh, the accuracy numbers and also error numbers they are plotted because uh, error being 1 minus accuracy they are plotted here in the y axis so you can see uh, for the example that we had discussed in the previous lecture that uh, uh, this is how as we go as we move from uh, ve cutoff value of 0 uh, towards uh, around 0.5 and the uh, accuracy keeps on increasing and if we look at this range from 0 0.4 to 0 0.8 uh, the uh, accuracy is uh, stable around 0 0.8 value so a bit fluctuation but uh, in a way stable around 0 0.8 value in this particular region and then again as the cutoff value further increases this uh, particular value goes down so this is uh, what the data that we had created the graphic representation of the same so now let's open r studio and we'll import this uh, uh, sensitive sensitivity and specificity uh, data that we have just created so let's import this file you can see 21 uh, observation three variables so let's uh, remove uh, the na columns and also na uh, rows here uh, so that has been removed 
Now, uh, what we are interested in, we are we want to uh, create an ROC curve. So, ROC curve is between sensitivity and 1 minus uh, uh, specificity. So, therefore, let us compute that. So, the data frame that we have is, so we have cutoff value, then uh, this number 1 minus specificity and then sensitivity. So, uh, this particular data frame has been ordered by cutoff value. So, cutoff value. Uh, so let us execute this code. We will look at the output. You would see that is starting from cutoff value of 1 and then uh, it as the value goes down uh, different numbers for sensitivity and uh, 1 minus is, uh, specificity have been created have been computed. Now, these numbers would be plotted to create uh, ROC curve. So, let us create this particular plot. So, as we talked about that ROC curve plots, ROC curve plots the sensitivity and uh, 1 minus specificity points you can see this as the uh, we look at the uh, again if we look at the output again for cutoff uh, value of 1 and uh, both these values are going to be 0 and 0. So, therefore, you can see the first point is here. Then for cutoff value of 0 0.95, uh, you can see this uh, value is uh, x value is 0 and the y value is 0 0.083. So, therefore, you see this. Uh, similarly, for as we uh, as this particular number decreases, uh, you would see that sensitivity value uh, keeps on increasing and th that is, is reflected in the plot. So, therefore, as the cutoff value uh, moves towards uh, uh, 0 0.5, uh, from one uh, from the value of one the model improves in identifying the true positives so more true positives are being identified being identified as we move cutoff value from one to one towards uh, point 0.5 as this uh, cutoff value decreases from one so the sensitivity value has been uh, improving right uh, as we uh, move further right as we move further you would see that uh, from here if we move further you would see uh, 1 minus uh, specificity uh, this value is again uh, uh, some value is there and uh, you would see that this value is also increasing as we move further. So, that means uh, true negatives uh, true negatives as we discussed uh, true negatives as we uh, discussed are uh, uh, more false negatives are being identified right uh, in this particular model in this particular plot. So, as we move further uh, the sensitivity improves further. So, as we keep on uh, changing the cutoff value uh, sensitivity moves uh, sen sen uh, sensitivity increase further, but at the expense of uh, uh, false negative values. So, uh, we gain uh, we gain in terms of identifying more ones, but uh, that comes at the expense of uh, misclassifying more zeros. So, uh, but the overall sensitivity keeps on increasing. So, we are interested in this top left corner. That is, this is the desirable. Uh, 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 this is the desirable performance of a model that we want. So, because we are interested in identifying more ones, therefore, top left corner we are interested in this particular region. If we look at the uh, particular 0.5 value, at what uh, which point is actually reflecting that value, you we can see that 11th value is reflecting the uh, 0.5 uh, cutoff value, wherein uh, this. Uh, uh, true negative uh, false negative rate is 0 0.16 uh, and uh, we can uh, we can see that uh, sensitivity is 0 0.83 at 0 0.5 if we uh, look further then the maximum if we look uh, further then uh, the uh, false uh, uh, false negative uh, rate increases quite uh, significantly so therefore as we talked about, uh, we would like to identify uh, the model which is in this uh, top left region and not uh, go more into the right direction. So, therefore, 
This is the model uh, corresponding to a 0.5 cutoff value. If we look at the number 0.16 is on the x axis, uh, 0.16 uh, on x axis, so it would be I think this point and then uh, you have 0.83, yes, so this is the point uh, corresponding to 0.5 cutoff value and uh, uh, lies in the top left region. So, probably for the cutoff value of 0.5, uh, we are getting good, of a, a good enough performance even for uh, you know using uh, these matrix sensitivity and specificity. To have a, uh, so these were the points to have uh, the uh, actual ROC curve that is generally used. Uh, we can uh, change the type of plot uh, from uh, point plotting to step plot plotting. So, generally uh, step uh, plots are used for ROC curves. This is uh, the plot you can see uh, till uh, at till few cutoff values, few changes in cutoff values starting as it decreases from 1. The sensitivity keeps on decreasing, sensitivity keeps on increasing as and as the uh, uh, cutoff value decreases further, right, uh, there is uh, some, uh, some uh, false negatives are also some false negatives are also being identified by the model, uh, uh, classified by the model, right. As we move further, further we see some jump in sensitivity, but more uh, false negatives are being classified by the model. So, this is the ROC curve. If we want, we can draw the reference line. So, this is the reference line representing the average case scenario. So, this reference line uh, representing the average case scenarios and this uh, particular uh, line representing the ROC curve. So, let us go back to our discussion. Now, uh, another uh, interesting point uh, uh, that uh, we can understand from this exercise is uh, that uh, while we want to identify uh, when we have a special class of interest, we want to uh, identify more of uh, class 1 members. Uh, because uh, the idea in a business context is generally for example, whether a customer is going to respond to a particular pro uh, promotion offer or not. So, in that case we would like to have all those customers which are having higher probability as estimated by the model and uh, mail them our offer. So, therefore, creation of a rank ordering of uh, records with respect to our class of interest uh, becomes uh, more practical. So, how that can be done, how uh, different plots and uh, uh, different mechanisms can be used to do that. So, rank ordering of uh, records for class of interest. Uh, this could be done based on the estimated probabilities of class membership. So, uh, the records which are having the highest probability of uh, belonging to uh, a special class of interest, they can be taken. Uh, so, all those records can be taken first, uh, so that uh, they can be the promotion offering can be sent uh, and can be mailed uh, to them uh, first. Right. So, uh, the lift, car, lift curve is there which can actually be used to display the effectiveness of the model uh, in rank ordering the cases. Right. So, uh, the selected model that uh, we might have, we can uh, draw a lift curve for the same and then find out how effective it is in terms of uh, rank ordering the cases. So, how it is actually constructed? Once you have built your model on the training partition. Uh, you can have uh, your validation partition scores and using these uh, scores, the estimated probabilities number, we can actually uh, construct our uh, lift curve. Now, uh, uh, the, the uh, effectiveness of model can uh, generally is, uh, gen generally is uh, seen using these, uh, this particular curve, cumulative lift curve, wherein uh, depending on the probability, we uh, look at the cumulative number of uh, records which can actually be uh, which are actually going to belong to class 1, class of interest. This uh, cumulative lift curve is also called gains chart. So, this is actually used to plot cumulative number of cases on x axis and cumulative number of true positive cases on y axis. 
So, uh, this particular uh, the plot displays the lift value of the model for a given number of cases. So, for a given number of cases, the lift value of the model is, is displayed with respect to random selection. So, if we just rely on the probability value of class membership, so uh, let us say if there are 20 observations and 10 belong to one particular class, class of 1. So, therefore, probability of a particular record belonging to cl uh, the class 1 is going to be 10 divided by 20, right. So, that is going to be 0 0.5. So, if we do random selection, how much more our model is going to help us in terms of identifying those cases as belonging to class 1, how much lift in comparison to this uh, random selection, this average uh, scenario is uh, going to be uh, given by our model. So, that we can do through uh, cumulative lift chart or gains chart. So, we will do, uh, we will again discuss this through an exercise. So, let us open our excel file. Now, we will look at the uh, this particular same data, the same uh, 24 observation and their estimated probability values can be seen here. Uh, we also have actual class corresponding to uh, each record, right. So, what we want to compute is uh, the cumulative actual class. So, for uh, because uh, uh, now uh, let us look at uh, this. So, the these probabilities are uh, pre arranged. Uh, from uh, so uh, in decreasing order. So, the record with the highest probability of belonging to class 1 is first and then it is followed by uh, records with slightly uh, you know in decreasing order having probability values in decreasing order and then the actual class membership is there. So, if we look at the cumulative actual class for the first record we have one, uh, once we get the second record uh, which is also uh, then the number, the cumulative number of uh, records uh, belonging to actual class will be 2. So, in this fashion we will uh, continue till we have actual class as identified as 1. Now, when we come to the first record which is misclassified as 0, but if you look at, we look at the probability uh, value it is more than 0.5, it is actually 0 0.686, but it has been mis uh, uh, but uh, it is going to be misclassified because it is going to be uh, classified as a record belonging to class 1 but it is actually class 0 so uh, we don't uh, uh, add this particular so this uh, there is no going to be no addition in the cumulative actual class this will remain same and then uh, in the same fashion we'll keep on uh, we'll keep on accumulating accumulating these numbers so, once we have uh, prepared this particular data, then we can go ahead and uh, create our plot. So, let us open R studio. So, first uh, let us import this particular data. you can see 24 observation 4 variables. Uh, let us remove the uh, any columns. Let us look at the range of this particular new variable cumulative actual class and range. So, we uh, have we know that we have 24 observation. So, the plot uh, is going to be between uh, number of cases on x axis and the cumulative actual class number on y axis. So, let us execute this code. and you would see a plot has been generated. Now, uh, let us also plot the uh, reference line. So, that being that is the reference line. So, now from this uh, from this from uh, now this uh, particular lift uh, this particular cumulative lift uh, curve or gains chart has been generated. Uh, let us also create the uh, legend and few other lines and let us look at the plot. Now, you can see this is the, the dotted line represents the cumulative ones using random selection. So, if we randomly select and rely on probability value this is the line. Uh, then the uh, actual uh, line uh, is cumulative ones sorted by predicted values. right? 
So uh, we will stop here and we will uh, continue our discussion and try to interpret this particular uh, gains chart in the next lecture. Thank you.